Kulani Mopimele and I'll be presenting today's Snack and Learn webinar on the structural retrofitting for the Nyamnal Bridge, which lies in South Sudan. Um, I'm a structural engineer in the Brian Stan Transport and Infrastructure um, Division. Just a few household um, housekeeping items. Um, please note that the handouts have been provided and allowed for um, in, the hand in the handout sections. And um, there will be time for a Q&A se uh, session afterwards. Um, please feel free to type your questions in the question box that has been provided. So the agenda of this presentation will cover the following. We look at the project background, um, the services that were offered by WSP, um, existing information slash or sc scoping mission. Uh, and we'll look at some of the key challenges that were experienced during this project. We'll look at um, some of the survey information, including geotech. We're gonna look at the design, the solutions, the workflow process, key takeaways, and then ended off with a question and answer session at the end of this. So just tell you a bit more on the project background. Um, South Sudan is considered one of the youngest countries or rather the youngest country in Africa. Um, north Bar El Ghazal borders um, Sudan to the north. Um, and this area, this region is home to one of the tallest tribes in Africa called the Dinka tribe. Um, north Bar El Ghazal has a population of 720,000 with a density of 24 people per square kilometer. The community there mainly depends on subsistence farming as well as cattle herding. The National Route A43 also provides a vital north-south linkage between Sudan, the city of Wau, as well as South Sudan's capital, which is Juba, so it's quite a critical um, road that is used. The bridge was constructed in February 2009, however, it was not completed. Um, the reason for its incompletion is because in between the years 1983 to 2005, South Sudan experienced a civil war, and some of the, the instability from this civil war is actually still continuing um, over there in the area. A bit more on the project locality or the location of the bridge. As you can notice, South Sudan is bordered by Ethiopia, Kenya, Uganda, the DRC, the Central African Republic, as well as Sudan. The bridge itself is located in north northern uh, Bar El Ghazal region, and this is in the southern part of Sudan, as seen in this close-up view of the uh, location of the bridge. If we look in, if we zoom in even more on the project's location, we'll notice that the road A43 is the one that is going over here, spanning the Lower River, and that is where the bridge is. The services and deliverables that were offered by WSP as follows. We looked at the scoping mission, which included the desktop study, a hydrology study, as well as a geotechnical investigation. We also looked at the design, which then included the detailed design report, as well as standard documentation. And then to close it off as a deliverable, we needed construction drawings. Some more information on the existing bridges as follows. The bridge itself is a steel bowstring gambrel type truss bridge. Um, it spans the Lower River in four spans of 14 meter simply supported um, um, spans. The allowed width for the carriageway is eight meters with an allocation of 1.2 meter sideways on either side of the bridge. The first site visit took place in October 2019. And at this site visit, it was noted that the bridge was partially completed with only the substructure, the steel truss and concrete pedestrian walkways that are in place. There was no, there was a missing concrete deck to accommodate vehicular traffic, meaning that the bridge itself cannot accommodate vehicular traffic. The second site visit then took place on July 2021, and this entailed the inspection, the complete inspection, structural inspection of the bridge. The as-built information, or rather the as-built drawings, are showing us that the bridge was founded on piles, on pile caps, as you can note, that both the piers and the abutments were founded on piles and pile caps from the as built drawings. Some elevation views of these as, of these piles and abutments as well, to still show that the structure is founded on piles. Some of the photos that were taken from some of the scoping missions. And I'd like to draw attention to this image here in the bottom center. 
and what you'll notice there is that there is indeed no concrete. Um, there's missing uh, there's missing concrete, and the bridge itself cannot currently accommodate any vehicular um, traffic in its current state. What was also noticed on site is that the bridge was probably launched into position from one of the river embankments, and this is noted due to the pictures on the right that are showing the nose, uh, the launching nose, as well as the launching guide. Some of the key findings from the scoping mission are as follows. It was found that the beams were pre, uh, the transverse beams were, were pre-cambered with a 15 millimeter pre-camber. There were sharp exposed steel edges. There were cracks in the walkway. There was improper sealing of joints between walkways and other elements. There were damaged and faded structural steel protective coatings on, on, on some of the structural elements. The handrails were bent and damaged at some at some areas. We also noticed that there was an erosion of um, the, the embankments and the approaches that was taking place. The bearing seats and bearings had been filled with debris at the time of inspection. Spoiling and honeycombing was also noted at the western abutment and exposed in an grouted bearing plates and pockets were also noted. The key findings in picture format, as you can see here, will note the honeycombing that took place on the abutment, will note some of the erosion that was being referred to on the bridge approaches, as well as the bearing seats that are full of debris, as well as the improper sealing of joints that is taking place here, and some safety issues that were also generally noted. Key challenges experienced in this project were as follows. One of the first challenges that was um, hard hitting was the travel um, the, the, restri the travel restrictions due to COVID. Um, as 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 well known that um, most countries had their borders closed and no flights um, were actually allowed. So this caused a bit of delays in the project. However, we had to communicate with the client. Well, the electrode types also could not be confirmed visually on the weld plates. Um, structural reinforcement um, of the various concrete elements could also not be confirmed visually, as well as apart from the main dimensions of the bearing seat, um, the main properties of the bearing seats themselves could not be um, determined visually on site. Another key challenge was the verification of the existing trust member sizes. The first site visit did not confirm these sizes and then there were no S-bill drawings available for the design team to actually um, utilize. So on the second site visit during the bridge inspection, each and every st structural steel element was measured out and the dimensions are shown in the table here on your right. When we look at the survey data, there were three control points that were fixed around the, the bridge. And these were, were used as control points according to the coordinates that are shown in the table here on your bottom left. The survey equipment that was used was a Leica TS-02 total station, a Leica LS-10 precise level, Garmin, and, an, and a Garmin Navigator GPS. The programs that were used were the Leica Construction Manager, a Civil 3D, as well as a GIS program. A few pictures of the surveying that was taking place on site. As you can note that we have some of the control points that are seen there. We also have visuals of the survey equipment that was being used. A geotechnical investigation was also constructed, uh, um, was also um, done, and it entails the following. There was a desk, desktop study of the geology, four test pits that were three meters deep, three bowls, which were not less than 10 meters deep, one foundation indicator per test pit, pile coring, concrete coring, with a maximum of 10 holes that were allowed for, as well as one DCP test per test pit. The workflow process that was followed for this design is as follows, or rather for this project is as follows. The designs and design checks were done in Strap and Procon. The structure was then modeled in Revit and Civil 3D. The deliverables were then produced in the form of 2D drawings that were prepared also in several 3D. In terms of the design loading, the BS5400 design code was used with the following load, with the following load effects, um, the following loads that have been applied. You'll note that there was the self-weight that was applied, horizontal soil loading, all the way up until flood and wind loading. Some of the quantities that were used on the loading 
can be seen on the table on the right for the dead loads, going from the reinforced concrete, the plain concrete, structural steel, all the way to the loose sand. The quantities for HA and HB loading are also shown there as follows. More elaboration on the design loading or rather the traffic loading is as follows. The HA design load was applied on the structure, which consisted of a uni uniformly distributed load, as well as 120 kilonewton knife edge loading. These two loads were, were, were used in combination or a load, a single wheel load of 100 kilonewtons. These loads were applied on the structure to cause the most adverse effects. HB24 design loading was used, which implies that 24 units of HB were applied, resulting in a, in a load of 240 kilonewton per axle. The load was also applied in such a way to cause the most adverse effects on the structure. There was also a combination of the two traffic loads. A design check of the superstructure then took place in, 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 in Procon. Um, the designs themselves took place in Strap. I don't think I'd mentioned that in the previous slides. The designs themselves took place in Strap and the design checks were taking place in Procon, Sumo. These are some of the snippets from the design checks and as you can note, some of the actual forces that were found in the members, in the structural steel members of the truss. A design check was also conducted on the abutments where the loads from the superstructure were then directly applied into a Sumo model onto the abutments themselves with the following concrete qualities, um, a concrete strength of 30 MPA and the yield strength of um, 460 MPA for the steel. What was noticed after the design check was that the reinforcement that was required for all of these um, abutment elements over here, as you can note, the reinforcement that was required are in this, in this column over here, and the reinforcement that was provided was more than the reinforcement that was required, and hence this element was considered as being a pass. A similar check was done for the, uh, for the peers, and as noted previously for the abutments, the reinforcement that is required versus the reinforcement that was provided was more, and hence it was concluded that the peers were also fine. A design check was done on the pile caps using the strut entire method of analysis, and the, found, the, the, the check itself also found that the pile caps were actually okay. A further design check was also conducted on the piles. The snippets of the images that you can see attached there are strap image, rigid, link, rigid, rigid link models that were modeled for the steel uh, for the for the pile design as well as the different um, envelopes that were provided for the values I have seen in the table at the bottom there. The results from the strap model also then indicated to us that the shaft stresses that were found in the piles at, at serviceability limit state did not exceed the maximum of five mega uh, five MPA and hence they were considered to be acceptable. Um, the reinforcement that was also provided was less than the reinforcement that the reinforcement that was required is less than the reinforcement that was provided. You'll notice that most of this project did involve a lot of design, um, a lot of um, design checks. Another design check then took place on the on the pile on the on the on the connections of the steel structure. What we'll notice that we'll focus on the apex connections as well as the girder connections. The apex connections are the apex connections that we're seeing in the circled, the circled area here, which are along the top cords of the, of the structure, as well as the girder connections, which are these connections here that are running along the girder. The design checks were also done in, in Sumo, and these were the results. It showed that the connections that were used on site are actually okay. Some of the design drawing deliver deliverables as well. As can be noted, this is the general arrangement showing the elevation of the bridge and the cross section of the bridge. We have another, another view that shows us the plan view of the bridge and the structure itself, as well as the final solution that was provided to the client, which consists of a cast, a 250 millimeter cast in situ concrete deck supported by 
is supported by um, permanent uh, formwork in the form of um, 100 millimeter steel planks, concrete planks, I mean. The reason for the solution was that when WSP, when the WSP team went to site, they noted that there were angle plates that were allowed for on the structure. This meant that there would be no direct loading on the main girders themselves, but rather the loading would follow this format. The loads would go from the transverse beams onto the main bottom girders. From the main bottom girders, the loads would then move onto the vertical and diagonal members. From the vertical and diagonal members, the, core, the, the load then moves to the top cord members all the way onto the supports. Some sustainable development goals that were achieved through this Nyamlao Bridge project are as follows. As a no poverty and creation of local labor in the, for, in, the, in, the, in the sense that local contractors were used for the geotechnical investigation work as well as the topographical surveying, the promoting, promotion of good health and well-being, the promotion of quality education, as well as the promotion of sustainable cities and communities are all covered in the fact that this bridge will be able to connect Sudan to South Sudan. And most of these areas, such as good health, quality education, as well as um, the sustainability of cities, can be drawn from Sudan itself. In summary, this project showed that WSP has a willingness and a, resi a resilience to produce cross-border pro cross projects during the pandemic. There was usage of local contractors which then meant that the project could have could be speeded up after the delays that were caused by the COVID-19. Um, Constant client engagement was also required just in order to keep the client updated each and every single week. After this, the project will go into design review, where the project committee, the design review committee will review our detailed design report as well as the drawings that have been submitted. The project will then go out into construction tender once the reviews are completed. In closing, I'd like to leave the crowd with this following quote. As a newborn child must not be deprived of constant nourishment for his growth, so must this bridge serve as the passage of nourishment to this newly young formed country. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. The floor is now open for questions. Thank you, Kulani, for a fantastic presentation. So before uh, moving into the Q&A period, I would like to remind attendees to enter your questions in the question box on the GoToWebinar platform. And also you can download a PDF version of the presentation from the handout box on the dashboard. I will start with the first question. What were some of the measures put in place to appoint contractors? So the measures that were put in place to appoint contractors first and foremost was there was a, uh, an issue for a quotation. Different contractors were approached and they issued WSP with different quotations. These quotations were then sent to the client for the client to also um, analyze and review the pricing. The client also was able to also recommend some of the contractors. However, the final, then, the final step and process that was taken was that WSP conducted a due diligence on the chosen contractors, since these are contractors that are operating outside of South Africa and rather in the African region themselves in a high risk country as well. A due diligence process was conducted on the contractors and contractor was then appoint, appointed from that. Thank you. Um, is the bridge at risk of floods? Uh, the free board seems quite low. The bridge is not at risk of floods. Um, the survey, a, a, a flood, a flood, a hydrology flood analysis was conducted on the bridge, and it, that did confirm that the bridge is currently not at risk of flooding. Okay, a similar question here regarding the rainy season that uh, has been in the past few months. Has it affected the the project? The only way that's in, we're in the rainy period actually affected the project was when the geotechnical contractor had to now shift or move his equipment to the project location itself. Um, some of the roads um, in, in, in South Sudan are quite are quite bad and therefore the rainy season rather the rains just make it worse um, for the traveling. So there were a bit of delays due to the rain to the rain um, but the delays only affected the geotechnical um, work that was being carried out. 
Thank you. Uh, what guided the decision to your choice of deck finish? Um, as mentioned in the previous slide, that um, what guided the decision to the the solution to the deck was the fact that there were angle plates that were discovered on site. So it clearly shows the method of construction that they were initially going for, rather the method of construction that the contractor was going to go for. And hence WSP then just continued with what was what was already in place and then had to retrofit or rather come up with a solution that will work around that. And that is why we came up with a solution of a cast in situ deck, 250 millimeter cast in situ deck, because the angle plates also did allow for a depth of 250 millimeters to also then be supply, um, supported on shear studs and pre-cost planks. Thank you. Uh, there's a question here. The bridge seems quite risky for the general uh, public, uh, for nearby uh, potentially kids playing. Um, have any measures been taken to stop people from climbing on the deck? Unfortunately, um, the bridge the bridge is still is still being used by the by the locals. Um, the local community members and the local chiefs have been alerted of such. In fact, there was an incident of a pedestrian actually falling over the bridge. Um, so that has been reported. However, due to due to, due to the fact that the bridge is such a needed um, infrastructure element, there is no other way of crossing that bridge. People, or rather, the community itself, would rather risk to use those existing concrete walkways in order to cross the bridge. The bridge itself is a safety concern at the current at the current state. Um, however, the locals have been notified, and the relevant um, stakeholders have been notified. However, it just appears that. Um, the community is adamant on using the bridge as it stands. The numbers of, of, of such uh, incidents, not fatalities, or of such in, um, fatalities, incidents that have been recorded are not that high, however. Understood, thank you. Um, how was the safety ensured during the site visit? The safety of the site visit was two-sided. Um, there was a WSP element to it where our health and safety professionals had to do an in-depth analysis of the safety and security in South Sudan. There was a detailed travel plan that was actually prepared before the travel itself actually took place. And this detailed things such as when, when the plane was going to leave and what time exactly the plane was going to leave, what time the plane would, would actually land, when um, the WSP team would be traveling to the hotels, when the WSP team would be traveling to the site, how long it would take to get to the site, what form of transportation would actually be used to get to the site as well. The other side of this um, security, ensuring security was working hand in hand with the client. Um, the health and safety team of the client themselves was also alerted of, 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 of WSP's team members traveling, and hence they were also able to chip in rather um, regarding just the safety and, 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 and the traveling concerns that were there. Thank you. What are the corrosion protection measures implemented to achieve design service uh, life? And normally, the corrosion protection me me uh, members that are, um, I mean, uh, corrosion protection measures that are put in place is uh, a coating, coating of a steel coating of the steel, um, using different um, coating specs and different coating um, standards. However, the main, the main. Uh, corrosion protection me measures that should be applied is just a standard um, steel protection coating. Thank you. Uh, sorry, a lot of question here. <laughs> um, have you checked in situ concrete residual um, durability? Yes, um, that is the reason why in those, um, um, the slides that were under the geotechnical um, investigation information actually allowed for concrete coring of the of the of the different um, um, concrete elements of the bridge itself so concrete cores and were, were taken and then analyzed in the lab in order to establish the in-situ strength of the concrete itself as well as just to confirm some of the rebar sizes that were shown on the asbel drawings thank you uh, there's a long question here um, with the site being in another country and assuming that there were no WSP representative full-time on site to supervise the geotechnical investigation how did WSP ensure that the investigations were carried out uh, with quality okay so WSP sent out a team 
to go on the scoping mission. So the second scoping mission that was um, um, noted in July 2020 um, involved, in July 2021 actually, um, involved um, one of the uh, professional members of WSP going on site and actually guiding um, some of the geotechnical contractors as to what needed to be done, or rather not necessarily guiding, but then having a first view of, of the geotechnical contractors on site and the kind of work that they were doing, just to confirm if indeed these were people who did know the story. And it did turn out that indeed they did. Um, a second phase that was applied to this was that um, the client had project engineers that were constantly on, 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 on the ground, available on the ground. Um, we ensured that these engineers would also go and, and give the, the site some inspections and some supervisions, as well as just to constantly keep sending us pictures um, of the investigation as it was taking place. And that is how we were able to um, control the quality of the work that was being done by the geotechnical engineer. Thank you. And I will take the last question. Um, in what way does this project stand out from previous WSP bridge projects that were done in Africa? This, this project, first and foremost, this project is a first type of project wherein there was a structural retrofitting element of it. So i.e. a structure that was already found um, to be existing, a structure that was already found to be standing. And then we had to come in and verify existing existing member sizes, existing um, in situ concrete strengths, et cetera, et cetera. And then retrofit this design um, in order to construct the bridge or rather to finalize the construction of the bridge. The second, second thing I would say that makes this project different is the vicinity or the location of the bridge. This bridge is very close to, um, it's very closely located to the Sudan border. Um, so to the north of the bridge, um, there is a, uh, there's, a, there's a Sudan border and most elements such as even construction elements, it was noted that um, Sudan is really the city that um, South Sudan really depends on or rather the country that South Sudan um, depends on to actually um, um, feed off um, with most of uh, most items such as um, construction items, um, quality education, um, quality hospitalization. You know, so that it makes it different. It makes it it makes it different because now this bridge will allow ex the community access to such um, facilities. Thank you. Thank you very much, Kalani, for a fantastic presentation. Really interesting. Uh, we're at the end of our webinar session, so please feel free to follow up directly with Kulani via the contact details shown on the screen. And I would like to thank everyone for joining today. Thank you for your time and thank you, Kulani, again for presenting. It was a pleasure working with you. Thank you. Thank you very much, everyone.